Hello people, in this video we want to look at tetany. Okay, what is tetany? Tetany here, the, the textbook says the definition, uh, definition is that there is hyper excitability of peripheral nerves. So now let us say this is a nerve. Okay, draw a nerve. Okay, and let us say this uh, peripheral nerve is supplying uh, to some muscle. Okay, this is the muscle. So what happens? There is hyper excitability of this nerve. So the nerve has some receptors which are more than normal okay there are a lot of receptors so what happens the uh, the nerve is hyper excitable so the nerve gives stimulus and what happens the muscle goes into contraction again contraction 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 so there's kind of a spasm rapid spasm wild contractions in the muscle um, okay and there is no relaxation happening at the uh, in the middle see in the middle of these contractions there should have been res uh, relaxation of the muscle but these relaxations are not happening okay there are no relaxations between these contractions so there is um, a repeated contractions of the muscle wild contractions repeated spasm right of the muscle there is no relaxation in the middle so this is tetany this is uh, a condition wherein there is hyper excitability of the peripheral nerves rapid spasm or contractions of the muscle happens without a relaxation of the muscle in between the stimuli okay so when does this happen this happens whenever uh, there can be low calcium okay so uh, remember this whenever there is low calcium what happens the nerve will um, there is low calcium in the body so what the nerve will do as there is low calcium it will make lot of calcium receptors like okay um, you know it it uh, maybe i am not able to catch calcium it will think right and it will start making lot of calcium receptors but actually the thing is calcium is low so when calcium becomes available there will be even slight calcium can put the muscle into a tetany, tetany. Okay, don't use the word tetanus here. Tetanus is clostridium. Tetany will cause tetanus. Okay, that is C. Clostridium is a bacteria. That is tet. Clostridium tetany. That is an I. It will cause. What will it cause? Tetanus. That is your vaccine that you take. Tetanus vaccine and all. That is a different condition. Okay. We are here not talking about this bacteria and this disease. We are here we are talking about a condition called tetany, right? Tetany is because of hypocalcemia, right? Low calcium levels in your body. So now let us go to this causes of tetany. Why will there be uh, tetany? That is why will there be low calcium levels in the blood? That much if you answer, that is enough. Hypoparathyroidism. So your parathyroid um, hormone levels are less. Okay, what was parathyroid supposed to do? Parathyroid hormone is supposed to increase the calcium levels in your blood, right? So parathyroid hormone can go to the extent of pulling this calcium away uh, from the bone and keeping it in your blood. So now what happens if there is low parathyroid hormone? So that is hypoparathyroidism is there. Then what will happen? Calcium also will be low. So that will lead to what? Tetany. Very good. That will lead to tetany. Okay, so basically, why are we? Uh, why is it an important topic? The tetany is an important topic in surgery is because they would have removed the parathyroid uh, gland. Okay, because they went to do a thyroidectomy or a uh, subtotal thyroidectomy or a near total thyroidectomy, and then uh, there could have been a removal of the parathyroid glands. Where are these parathyroid glands, by the way, in relationship? in relation to the thyroid gland look at this image here this is the thyroid gland and behind the posterior view they are showing you that there are parathyroid glands here and four of them they have shown okay so they went to remove the thyroid gland for whatever reason the parathyroid glands are also removed or that was the planned procedure so this is again they are showing you the posterior aspect of the thyroid gland where you can see the superior thyroid and the inferior thyroid four of them are there here right see the whole point of thyroid and parathyroid no they keep uh, doing the opposite thing Parathyroid will do one thing, thyroid will do one thing. They both kind of, um, look at this. See, thyroid um, gland will reg uh, reduce the calcium levels in the blood, regulates is it. Parathyroid will increase the calcium level in the blood. This sounds about good, right? This sounds good that it will increase calcium levels in the blood, but actually it pulls this calcium from bones, etc. Okay. Calcium is very important for the heart, etc. Anyways, now where are we? We are actually looking at causes of tetany. You have understood that when they went to do a subtotal thyroidectomy or a near total thyroidectomy, they went and removed the 
parathyroids okay that can cause tetany why because of hypocalcemia very good then this parathyroidism hypoparathyroidism could also be familial that means some people don't have parathyroid glands looks like okay and uh, uh, what else Severe respiratory alkalosis can cause tetany in hyperventilation. So here they are talking about um, a respiratory alkalosis. Okay, so there are two types of alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis, right? Metabolic alkalosis you have. Let's use blue because it's alkalosis, not acidosis, right? So there can be metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis. They think severe, severe respiratory alkalosis can lead to tetany as in hyperventilation. Let's look at this. Basically, guys, whenever there is high, whenever there is hyperventilation, you know, just try to breathe fast. Okay, you are doing hyperventilation. What will happen? You will go into alkalosis. This much you have understood, right? Uh, because uh, you will breathe more, the carbon dioxide levels will become less, right? So there will be alkalosis. But this alkalosis will promote the binding of calcium to albumin. So if the calcium gets bound to albumin, the amount of the fraction of ionized calcium in the blood, right? Ionized calcium may reduce. So what will happen? This will get bound to albumin. So what will happen? Calcium values in the blood will reduce. What will happen if there is calcium value which will uh, reduce in the blood? It will lead to hypocalcemia that can lead to tetany. Even metabolic al alkalosis can lead to tetany, guys. But respiratory alkalosis, the chance of tetany are more, they are saying. Okay. So let us understand uh, all these terminologies. Just go here. So there are two types of alkalosis, that is metabolic alkalosis and respiratory alkalosis. So respiratory alkalosis because of hyperventilation, breathe, 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 uh, low levels of carbon dioxide, uh, etc. You, you will have um, respiratory alkalosis. Now metabolic alkalosis has something to do with diarrhea, vomiting. So you're losing the fluids, right? You're vomiting, so I'm putting an up arrow here. That is diarrhea. So what happens here? Or diuretic drugs, you're losing fluid in the body right so what happens in that case alkalosis think basically here what happens in vomiting and all you lose chloride and you will uh, have more bicarbonate bicarbonate will be more in the body okay so when bicarbonate is more what will happen it will lead to alkalosis so whenever uh, you're, there is diarrhea etc you're losing h plus so what will be retained will be h co3 minus right so you're retaining uh, bicarbonate so there can be alkalosis but anyways that <clears throat> the point of this video is not to debate on metabolic alkalosis versus uh, respiratory alkalosis just remember that respiratory alkalosis can lead to decreased calcium because it will bind to albumin and this can further lead to tetany because of low calcium levels in the blood that is all was the intention of understanding this okay now uh, where are we we were here looking at the causes of tetany. So we have understood two things. Now let us look at the third one. Third one is very easy to understand. Anybody will say this. Low calcium levels. See, generally itself you can have low calcium levels. Nothing to do with your parathyroid uh, gland being removed or some alkalosis, etc. You have low calcium levels because you didn't eat calcium in your life or you have poor absorption from your gut or you have some acute pancreatitis or renal failure, etc. So it cannot reabsorb uh, calcium looks like so low calcium levels itself you you have so that is the, the main condition you have no surgeon caused it by because of some thyroidectomy or something okay osteomalacia rickets due to deficiency of vitamin d basically if there is deficiency of vitamin d what will happen you cannot absorb calcium yes so what will happen calcium has to come to the blood from where it can come from your bone and making the bone soft osteomalacia uh, rickets same thing vitamin d deficiency so actually i wouldn't put this here i would put it as deficiency of vitamin d <clears throat> okay so that can lead to what hypocalcemia again this is nothing but hypocalcemia so hypocalcemia will lead to your tetany then hypokalemic as alkalosis of pyloric stenosis this is what they were telling you know that there can be uh, gut tetany uh, gastric tetany can happen hypokalemic alkalosis again they are coming back to the same thing alkalosis will lead to calcium um, and less calcium in the blood so there can be tetany guys did you understand so many causes of alkalosis finally they have come to the same thing okay if there is pyloric stenosis is it hypokalemia so again what happens in pyloric stenosis there is vomiting 
whenever there is vomiting there is a loss of chlorine chloremia hypochloremia okay chlorine will remember and these people will also lose h plus so obviously you can understand the alkalosis this will actually lead to hypokalemia so that is leading to uh, okay that alkalosis alkalosis will lead to what binding of let's write that here wait here we can write alkalosis will lead to binding of calcium to albumin so this will lead to hypocalcemia can you say this is hypocalcemia free that is that ionized calcium ca2 plus will be less okay this will lead to tetany very good okay following massive transfusion citrate overloads so citrate also something similar citrate will bind to calcium 2 plus okay so what will happen the citrate chelates circulating ionized calcium thereby reducing the plasma ica that is ionized calcium concentration will reduce okay um let's say like this yeah this is correct chelates binds to circulating ionized calcium leading to reduced ionized calcium concentration okay so as you can see here finally what you have to write here is calcium 2 plus is less okay how does that happen because of hypoparathyroidism respiratory alkalosis calcium will bind to albumin low calcium levels in beginning itself vitamin d to uh, d uh, vitamin d deficiency will lead to calcium deficiency uh, if you are having vomiting etc same thing hypokalemic alkalosis this is more like a metabolic alkalosis then citrate citrate if you give massive blood transfusion then you will have it bind to calcium and it will reduce the ionized calcium level okay that's it guys so you have completed the causes of tetany finally it is nothing but a reduction in calcium level so this kind of summarizes the causes of tetany okay then let's move on now we have to move to the signs and symptoms guys is it okay for you uh just one thing here why will citrate come with the massive blood transfusion that is because if they have used it as a preservative right sodium citrate or something but now they don't use this uh, much as a, a preservative okay so people now we have finished tetany uh, causes what tetany is causes everything we have seen now let us look at the signs and symptoms how will you know that the patient is having tetany so basically this is called a circum oral paresthesia okay around the lips paresthesia paresthesia is what how do you define paresthesia uh, you know abnormal sensation pricking uh, pins in uh, what is it can you say pins in needles yeah pins in needles kind of sensation okay so uh, around the lips so that you should remember it can also be fingers and toes so let's show some fingers here and some toes here and around the lips so all this is what what are we talking about tetany don't forget we are talking about tetany in this video So let's write that here. Otherwise, you won't know what we are talking about. Tetany signs and symptoms. Okay. Now, cramps in the hand and feet. So we have put this hand and feet cramps. Then you can see that there can be carpopedal spasm. Metacarpophalangeal joints are flexed. Um, interphalangeal joints are extended. The thumb is adducted. Let's show this photo. So this carpopedal spasm, guys. so try to understand this let's take it back here understand this one what they are saying metacarpo phalangeal metacarpo phalangeal joints mp joints what is where is that here metacarpal phalangeal joints are flexed interphalangeal joints are extended this is interphalangeal joint this is extended thumb is adducted see thumb is inside right adducted so this is called as obstetrician's hand okay carpopedal spasm okay guys is this clear in the foot what will you see in the foot you will see extension in the ankle joint just put your uh, where is the ankle here extension in the ankle joint 
flexion of the toes. How will you flex your toes? Toes flexion. I would say toes flexion is this side, right? Downwards. And your ankle is extended. Actually, here more than uh, extension of we use the word dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Okay, so uh, then fl flexion of the toes are seen. Okay, then guys, we are uh, what are we looking at? We are looking at the signs and symptoms of tetany. Okay, you should understand when somebody is having this tetany, you should be able to identify it, isn't it? Look at this image here. Let's try to understand. This is um, severe tetany. Following removal of the parathyroid adenoma requiring calcium infusion. So this person see the thumb is adducted. That much at least definitely we can see. Right? And the fingers, you can see the metacarpo, uh, metacarpophalangeal joint is kind of flexed and the interphalangeal joints are actually extended. You can see that. Okay? They have given it in a different view. Okay? Carpopedal spasm. So let's put that image here. So what were we looking at here? The signs and symptoms of tetany. So here we are, uh, we have finished uh, about the toes, how they will be, how the ankle joint will be, how the metacarpophalangeal joint, etc. Carpopedal spasm we have spoken about. Pedal means what? Pedal somehow uh, seems to refer to the leg. So carpopedal spasm can be leg, hand, right? Now let's move, move on here guys. Strider is a dangerous complication of severe tetany due to spasms of muscles of respiration. So laryngospasm is happening here. If there is strider, right, uh, strider means what? Noisy inspiration or uh, respiration basically you can say. So there is spasm of the muscles of respiration. So now you can understand this is going to be fatal, can be severe, dangerous complication because all these small things, hand, leg, lips and uh, didn't matter much. But when it is uh, starting to affect the respiratory muscles, if respiratory muscle go into spasm, what will be there? Strider, that is narrowing of the airway. If this is the airway and there's a narrow airway, when the air goes through this narrow airway, there will be strider. So this will be a dangerous complication. Um, you, this is basically a symptom or a sign of a dangerous complication of tetany. Okay. Now, what will happen guys if there is intraocular muscles uh, which are involved now? That means intraocular muscles means your um, dilator pupillae, constrictor uh, muscles, right? So those muscles which are inside your eyeball, don't think about the uh, rectus muscle and all that, not those, lateral rectus, medial rectus, not the ones which are around the eyeball, controlling the movement of the eyeball, inside the eyeball, the pupil constriction dilation, those muscles which are con controlling the pupil constriction dilation, right? That, those muscles, intraocular muscles, if they are affected, what will happen? There can be blurring of vision, okay? So that's what they have written here. Please look at this. Blurring of vision if somebody is complaining and you are suspecting that it could be tetanus, you have to be, sorry, not tetanus. You're not supposed to use the word tetanus if it is tetany, okay? Then convulsions, though rare, can occur in infants. In infants, convulsions can occur. Okay. Then that is only in children. But now, what? Uh, how will you diagnose uh, tetany? Now, this person, you don't know whether uh, he has tetany or not. You want to see whether he has tetany. So, what you will do? You can uh, have some provo uh, provocation test. So, you have the Trousseau sign, Chauvet sign. Let's look at these. I think this pronunciation is slightly different. C, if we say C is also included, was stick, shaw stick sign. Okay, this one. What they are doing here to this guy? They are going to tap on the, tapping the facial nerve at the angle of jaw. How can you tap facial nerve? That's so bad the way they have written here. Wait, let us see. So the, uh, there will be a twitching of the eyelids corner of the mouth. This is called as chaw was stick sign okay uh, their brief they, this indicates that facial nerve has hyper excitability so basically this uh, sign here look at this was text sign okay so basically what they are saying here it is um, tapping over the muscles to induce muscle spasm where will you tap tap over the facial nerve branches in front of the ear lobe so you have to tap where in front of the ear lobe this is what we want you should tell correctly where to tap 
front of the ear lobe if you tap it will cause muscle twitching over the whole of that side of the face only that side of the face okay so this is facial sign there is one more thing called as peroneal sign that is you can tap on the uh, tapping the peroneal nerve near the fibular neck will cause dorsiflexion and abduction of the foot so this is for the leg okay uh, this one is for the face and this is for the leg peroneal sign where will you tap near the fibular neck who knows where the fibular neck is somewhere here this is the neck of the fibula here somewhere you have to tap okay and if you tap there you will see that there is dorsiflexion see i like this word dorsiflexion okay dorsiflexion and abduction of the foot so something like this so let us see this is that guy's foot okay and i am going to tap here on the neck of the fibula that near the neck of the fibula that is peroneal nerve and what will happen there will be abduction of the foot the foot should go like this abduction of the foot and there will be dorsiflexion can you do that yeah so this is what will happen in chopstick's sign see chopstick sign is not just facial it is also the leg part don't forget okay in the exam because most people will write only this photo they look at this and write it you can also do it on the peroneal okay can also check peroneal nerve okay now coming to the second one latent tetany means what you don't know whether the tetany is there somewhere hidden you want to bring it out whether that person has tetany or not now let us look at trousseaus sign nice name right trou t r o u trou s s e a u trousseaus sign okay when the blood pressure cuff applied to the arm is inflated above uh, wait inflated above the systolic pressure okay um the hand and feet go into spasm so see this, to get this carpopedal uh, you know you learned that carpopedal spasm right you know put your thumb inside your hand that is adduction of your thumb and keep your uh, metacarpo uh, phalangeal joints extend uh, flexed and your in Inter phalangeal joints uh, extended. Now you can hold your hand like this. I hope you have held it. So this will happen when you put a blood pressure cuff here and you tighten it. Basically, it's like a tonic, right? So tonic across you, something like that. You can remember. What exactly is happening here? Why, when there is no blood supply, it is going into this uh, kind of thing? They didn't explain that. They should explain, right? If there's no blood, why will it behave like that? So guys you have to put this pressure for 3 uh, minutes they are saying within 3 minutes the sign can come <clears throat> indicating to you latent tetany Definitely what we can guess is that the blood supply has stopped here and that there is hyper excitability of these nerves isn't it Even without all these signs you can definitely diagnose tetany by just measuring the calcium levels in that person's body okay So for that you will have to know normal calcium levels and all, right? If it is less than seven milligram percentage, then you can say that uh, you can establish that there is there can be tetany. Serum calcium level which is less than seven milligram percentage. Normal levels. <coughs> the normal calcium levels eight to ten. Okay. Can you remember that? and this calcium actually can be protein bound ionized complexed so many things ionized will be some 4 to 5 this you don't remember what you have to remember is uh, 8.5 to 10.3 if you can remember best way of remembering during is 10 i, I would just say 10 mg per deciliter okay less than 7 tetany tetany okay now let us go to treatment before that there is something here management of tetany you will estimate the serum calcium if it it will be yeah it will be less than 7 mg percentage in the case of tetany so you will have to give iv calcium gluconate what are you giving that day calcium along with calcium you have to give vitamin d supplementation so easy right i wouldn't suggest you to remember all these uh, numbers because that would be very difficult only for specific things you can look at that magnesium sulfate support of therapy also can be given okay that's it calcium gluconate vitamin d okay oral calcium also they are giving later initially they are giving iv 
IV calcium gluconate. At least this one will remember. Okay, IV calcium gluconate. They are giving later oral calcium. Okay, oral will put as green. What do you see? Vitamin D supplementation. How much you will give? One point one to one to three microgram. One to three sounds like one, two, and three. Actually, it's one to three. Okay, then. Uh, this is according to Manipal textbook treatment. Oral calcium, uh, you can give calcium lactate, calcium gluconate. In the acute cases, uh, injection calcium gluconate. Okay, uh, in acute cases. Slow IV. Slow only you will give everything, right? Otherwise, what will happen? You will land up with cardiac arrhythmia. You give more calcium, that guy will go to cardiac arrhythmia. So you have to give slow intravenous. So can you give calcium fast to a person? Very, very wrong. Cardiac arrhythmia will happen, okay? Then if you know the cause, you have to correct standard things that you will write. Okay. Same thing. Same thing from different, different textbooks. Okay. You have to give vitamin D also. So that's it guys. So in this video, what have we looked at? We have looked at tetany. Basically, tetany is a condition where there is hyper excitability of the peripheral nerves. This can happen because of hypocalcemia. Uh, this hyper excitability of peripheral nerves will lead to rapid spasms of the muscles, a wild contractions of the muscles without a relaxation of the muscle in between these contractions. Okay, there will be repeated stimuli, which will uh, make these muscles contract. This will lead to muscle spasm, right? Tetany. This can happen why? Because of hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia can happen because of hypoparathyroidism following a surgery or congenital or familial. Severe respiratory alkalosis can cause tetany because calcium will uh, bind to albumin in case of alkalosis. Uh, respiratory alkalosis especially because of hyperventilation. Low calcium levels because the person is eating less calcium or he is not able to digest, sorry, not able to absorb or he has renal failure or he has pancreatitis, that will lead to low calcium. Or uh, this guy has vitamin D deficiency, hence he has calcium uh, deficiency like uh, rickets, uh, osteomalacia, etc. Hypokalemic acid uh, alkalosis, that is uh, metabolic alkalosis can also lead to Calcium deficiency, like in pyro pyloric stenosis, there can be vomiting, leading to the loss of chlorine, high H plus, etc. Again, leading to alkalosis. Alkalosis, you have all understood, will lead to uh, hypocalcemia. Hypocalcemia will lead to the hyperexcitability of the nerves, and that will lead to tetany. Uh, then there can be uh, uh, somebody took massive blood transfusion, so citrate, uh, which was used as a preservative, has come into his body, and that citrate will bind to calcium, and that will again lead to hypocalcemia because the ionized form of calcium will be less. So that can again lead to what, guys? Lead to tetany. Very good. So we're looking at the causes of tetany. Now let's move on. Then we looked at um, uh, wow, okay, we looked at. Um, Signs and symptoms that person can complain of this tingling sensation around the lips, circum, oral, paresthesia, leg, toes, lips, fingers, what and all, everything, cramps of the hands, legs, right? Then there can be carpopedal spasm. Uh, we will talk to you about that. Uh, the, uh, the hand can become like an obstetrician's hand. The, then uh, strider, if it's there, it's very dangerous because that person can go into uh, respiratory complications, right? He can't breathe. Uh, if there is laryngeal spasm, right? And in case there is a spasm of the intraocular muscles, then he will have blurring of vision. He can also have, uh, the, in children, there can be convulsions because of uh, uh, tetany, okay? Or what am I saying? Yeah, tetany. Uh, now, this is the carpopedal spasm. Basically, look at the position. Uh, the wrist is flexed. Metacarpal phalangeal joint is flexed. Interphalangeal joints are extended thumb is adducted okay this is carpopedal spasm then uh, this happened to this person after a parathyroid adenoma was removed that means they removed the parathyroid i'm thinking so this is again same thing uh, that uh, carpopedal spasm basically if a person has latent tetany how can you diagnose um, it you just tap on that uh, person's um, um, in front of the ear lobe Okay, in front of the ear lobe. Okay, you tap and that person can go into some twitch uh, in of the eyelid, eyelid twitch or the corner of the mouth. So if somebody has an eyelid twitch, you can tell them probably you have tetany, right? Corner of the mouth, etc. So you can also check this on the peroneal nerve uh, uh, near the fibula's neck if you tap. Okay, 
then the another test is that called uh, this one was called a show schwastik sign okay the other one is called as the trousius sign where you are putting a uh, bp cuff here and raising the uh, blood uh, uh, pressure of uh, the apparatus that means you are basically making it like a tourniquet tight that time what will happen the hand will go into the scapupedal spasm right uh, then basically what are they telling you the trousius sign is actually more sensitive you have to hold this uh, cuff like this for 3 minutes within 3 minutes if it is there it will come okay that sign uh wait what else now coming to diagnosis you can also just estimate the serum calcium level and it will be less than 7 usually around 10 it should be 9 to 10 okay how will you treat you will give that guy calcium how will you give calcium you can you can give oral calcium which is very very common right oral calcium or you can give injection iv calcium gluconate right um, if you say injection it is not at all complete you should say iv i think right yeah slow intravenously you should give slow remember if you give calcium fast it will the person will go into cardiac arrhythmia that's very dangerous right then uh, you can also give vitamin d okay that's it guys so in this video you have looked at this topic tetany bye bye